just wonder how people go by and 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 not have a glass of wine with everything that is happening right now how do you go past on a day which just without one glass of red or white you know like just chardonnay shanine shanine Hi everyone and welcome back. You are chilling with your ultimate fave Naledi M official on Hotspot and today I'm going to be doing a TV recap on something I have been asked to do for months and I'm so glad that I actually got the opportunity to do it here because now I can kind of really share my thoughts with you guys and how I feel about the show but for any of you who doesn't know what the show is about please let me just give you guys the breakdown. They are young. Hamli and Makoko. Tandiwe, Prudence Makagula. And successful. I have a boutique. I'm a professional nurse. You know, I'm Dwana Oyewan. Strong and gifted. I also want in next. Following their calling in a modern world. I'm Esa Ngoma. To me, it's just a gift. See how these worlds come together. I thought it was a food. I also thought it was a food. I thought it was a food. As they juggle work and family. Why should Obinyanga be a secret? No, it's not a secret. In Mzansi Magic's brand new reality, Izango Mazo Dumo starts Wednesday, 7th October at 8 pm on Mzansi Magic. Now, judging by the title of the video, you guys can see that today I am going to be doing a TV recap on a show called Izangoma Zodumo, which if I can like direct translation, I guess it's basically called... If you guys have heard Babe Zodumo, it's, she's like a, a really big artist and she calls herself Zodumo, meaning like thunder in indirect English. So Izangoma means essentially traditional healers who bring the thunder, who bring the glitz, the glam. So they're not just your kind of conventional traditional healers, right? But let's not even get into that. For anybody who wants to know where the show is premiering, now, Izangoma Zodumo premiered in Mzanzi Magic, I think a couple of months back, but the new season, season two, is starting on the 6th of October at 8 p.m., I think Central African time. I'll just make sure to drop that below. So um, what basically happens in the show is that there are two traditional healers one is called Goko Maweni and one is called Goko Ngwe and they are not your conventional traditional healers but I'm gonna get into them shortly I just want to kind of break it down for anybody who doesn't know what the show is about it basically looks at traditional healers now I know how kind of it is a common topic to know that they are traditional healers but it's very taboo to see traditional healers in the spotlight which is why to a certain degree i am so happy that the show showcases a different side and a different light to traditional healers because a lot of the time people with special gifts are never really seen as oh like they're never really seen in admiration but they are normally seen in fear and i feel like it's time for us to move away from that because being a traditional healer or having some sort of of a special um i don't want to call it a superpower because this is not marvel okay but having that kind of direct line of spirituality shouldn't be seen as scary or taboo right i'm gonna get into that and talk about how this show has definitely changed my mentality and my thinking on um traditional healers the thing is I think now in South Africa and where we live in, we are slowly starting to embrace traditional healers. But let's look at the two characters in the show. Now, the first one I really want to look at is um, Goko Ngwe, which is Prudence Makakula. So she is the younger traditional healer. So she is in like our age range and she is uh, a mother to a son, but she also has that kind of difference about her. Now, for anybody who doesn't know how it all works is that normally when you are the person that you are, you are that person, so the lady. But sometimes when you are given that spiritual calling, you take on the, the, the shape and form of somebody else from an ancestral calling. So you will be given a name, it will be bestowed onto you. It's not like she just woke up and decided to call herself that, no. she It is bestowed onto her and she is in the actual figure of the person in question or the spirituality that she connects with right so her name is Prudence Makakula but when she is within the spiritual realm she is Goko Ngwe right so I really like her because she is one of the young uh, traditional healers in the show she is one of the main acts but I love how she 
can really transition between the two characters. So when she's prudent, she's a very uh, glitzy, glammy, very beautiful. She looks good. She does her hair. She does her makeup. And she also consults for celebrities. Spiritual healers are human. And I love that because this show kind of demonstrates how human they are. Like it's not like they just wake up and then they start, no guys, they eat, they wake up, they, they hang out like us, they look as beautiful as us, they love wigs. It's not like once you get into a specific line of work that all of that is taken away from you. And I love the show because this show basically highlights why we need to move away from that stereotype that once you look a certain way or once you are categorized under a certain um, job, or anything that you have to do in that calling that you have to look a particular way. It actually irks me in every way, shape or form. So I like Izangwa Mazoduma because they're breaking away from that stereotype that all traditional healers have to look sad and not have weaves and not have wigs. These are people with normal, ordinary lives. And I think what I love about the show is how you see the, transi the transition, right? So when she's Prudence, she's Prudence. She's like me, we could sit together, we can have a glass of wine together. But when she switches into that element of herself, she becomes an entirely different person and you have to respect that energy. And I love that because people understand that you have to respect that energy. So I really appreciate that about her. I love how she really kind of bears herself on screen, which a lot of the time is never truly appreciated. Because when you have to tell the truth about what you do and who you are and how it's kind of scared people off, it's, it's, it's not a nice thing to talk about because it almost alienates you. But I feel like in this particular instance, Prudence has really shone her light. And she's shown people that this is who I am and I love this. And also, bear in mind that even within um, entering the traditional Gila and being within that part of the world, there are levels. And she is one of the big ones. Like she has received a very, very strong gift. Her gift is very strong. Hence why she is not just, you know. My biggest losing. I know with Maga's Puma. Definitely there's something he wants to say and it's really important. So I really like Prudence. I really feel like she brought a lot to the show and I also feel like she's breaking that stereotype also because she is also explaining to the world that you can be a traditional healer with a very special gift gift, and you can still be a normal human being and still be accepted and bringing those two gifts together doesn't make you any less of a person, doesn't make you different, it doesn't make you scary, doesn't make you, you shouldn't be feared in any way, shape or form. You should only be respected because you walk with great people behind you. Goko Maweli! Hey, unexpected. And I'm not about what I'll call as was like I'm only what I'll call. I wasn't reading the second traditional healer that was on the show. Her name was Mahoto Koko Maweni Mokopo. Now, her name is Mahoto Mokopo, but her obviously her gift and the people that the ancestral part that she walks with they have given her the name Koko Maweni. Right? Now, Koko Maweni was a really interesting character, but she, to be really honest with you, she is the one that really brought the, 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 the energy to the show because she is the one who was very blatant about who she was and what she does. Now, the build up is yes, I'm here and I've got my little baby army of Izinyanga upcoming. You know, I want this to happen right and I want to announce my arrival. Um, Koko Ngwe was very respectful very you know she said what she needed to say she really respected her craft and she really respected those around her Koko Mawani had a very there was something very erratic about her but I liked it because it showed you a different side Koko Mawani a lot of the time would transition between the two and Koko Maweni also kind of brought a lot of zest to the show because she was like a very 
glitzy and glammy when she's Mahoto and then when she went into Kokomaweni, she still had an element of glitz and glam. She still brought her new ways of thinking into kind of like, you know, everything that we're doing right now. But I think a lot of people didn't receive that well. But I love the fact that she stood her ground and she basically embraced how she does things or how she basically works with her gift. Now, the only thing that I think scared me, yo, 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 guys, it's scared. I was scared. I watched like this. Was when Coco Maweni mentioned that she does dark magic. She used to do dark magic. I was like, oh. <laughs> guys, yo, no, 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 no. Isango Masatumo was bringing all the heat. It was just like, oh. Guys, you know what the crazy thing is? She has been so blunt and frank, which is something I love about her and which is why the show actually got the, 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 the hype that it did because she was being honest about what really happens and how we, it should not be feared. And some people were like, no, but how is that going to be perceived in the public? And she was like, it's not about the public. It's about being true to yourself. And as much as I appreciated that, I do and I did. Coco Maweni was very forthcoming. And forthcoming, not everyone receives it in the same way. And a lot of the time, her ancestral guides would jump out. They would jump out, they would tell you when they don't like what you're doing. So I personally, between the two, I liked Goko Ungwe, but I felt myself more drawn to Goko Maweni because Goko Maweni was very more um, blunt about the situation and she was very honest and open and it takes a lot to bear yourself like that on reality TV considering that this is a very sensitive topic that I think a lot of people are still finding their footing when it comes to believing in it, you know? And I'm one person who believes in it very much. It's very real, it's something we've seen time and time again in our culture, but you know when it's portrayed on, 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 on television and people like to kind of make it a gimmick when it wasn't, when it's not. I appreciate that she's so honest about the fact that guys, this is our life. This is not a gimmick. Like I used to do this, but I found a new path and now I focus on uh, being a better version or a better traditional healer and not focusing on dark magic. Not a lot of people can come clean about that. You understand? It takes a whole lot of chutzpah to be able to say that. Yes, it makes people fear you, but to a certain degree, it makes people respect you. But most importantly, coming to terms with the fact that it wasn't the right thing to do is something I respect in whatever shape, way or form that it comes in. You know what I mean? So I really liked them together. I do wish there were more uh, main characters. Like I do wish there was another lady, but I think again, because they were kind of the trailblazers of this new show, I am looking forward to what season two has to bring because I think season two will bring a lot more new characters who are no longer afraid to stand in the dark but to stand to be in the light and to to speak about these things because this is our culture this is what we live in and we should be able to to see it and we should be able to embrace it more than anything so I'm really excited to see what season two has to bring but comment down below and let me know if you want me to do a recap of season two kind of let you know who the characters are but yes guys we have reached the end of my TV recap with Izango Mazodumo and it was more so kind of like a character breakdown because I really do feel like season two has a lot to bring to the table because season one has broken the barriers and the one thing I'm glad is that traditional healers are now being seen in a positive light they deserve that platform they also deserve to be respected within their own right and their own craft and I'm really here for that I'm really here to see what season two has to offer but until then guys we have reached the end of this TV recap personality breakdown with Naledi M official on hotspot I can't wait to see you guys on my next TV recap with Izango Mazodumo but before I leave don't forget to check it out season 2 is premiering on the 6th of October 8pm Mzansi Magic 161 Central African Time but until then your ultimate fave is signing out